Hello, welcome to all of you for the lecture series under e sectioner under the ages of VTU. I am Professor Uma Rao, a retired professor from RV College of Engineering, bringing you this series of lectures on transmission and distribution. So, we will be taking up model 3. So, this is just a view of transmission lines in different geographical locations. So, you can see we have lines across plain land, across water bodies, across mountains and we discussed a number of issues about how do you design them, what sort of conductors you go depending on the environment, what sort of insulators you choose. So, you can just see these images and you can recognize the suspension insulators here and then the strain insulators to hold the towers. And now we will move on to see how we model the lines. After seeing the materials etcetera, you learnt about how to calculate the line parameters, the resistance, inductance, capacitance, the concept of GMR, GMD. Now, once you know these parameters, I need to model the line so that we can analyze the line. So, I would be concentrating on performance of transmission lines. This includes classification of the lines into short, medium and long lines and what are the current and voltage relationships and how do I define line regulation? What is Ferranti effect in short lines, long lines and medium lines? And we will see how to model short, medium and long lines and consider the hyperbolic modeling of long lines. And for each of these different types of lines, we will try to get the equivalent circuit so that we can get the characteristics of the line. And throughout we will be using ABCD constants or ABCD parameters and we will derive these parameters for different cases. So, our first learning objective would be to know what are the parameters of the lines and how do I classify the lines. So, now let us see what this is all about. So, the calculation of the parameters you have learnt how do I calculate the inductance say of a three phase line, where the three lines are horizontally placed, vertically placed, placed in the corners of an equilateral triangle. How do I calculate the capacitance between two conductors, between conductor and ground. So, all these concepts you have studied. Now, I will use these parameters to model the line. So, first as engineers, you need to know what is the meaning of modeling. Okay. So, the first type of model we build or we can build for a system is what we call as the physical model. What does that mean? Typically, what you would use in architectural designs. Supposing you want to design a building and you want to know how it looks like after the design. So, you will build a scaled down model. And once I look at it, I know how the big building is going to look like. That is called as a physical model. So, supposing you want to build a physical model of transmission system between two towers, then you can build a scaled down version of the towers, the lines where the parameters of the lines would be scaled down versions of the actual parameters. You can even 
put in small insulators etc and then get a visual image a picture of exactly what the scaled up real time system would look like. So, you can make some measurements with these with the scaled down physical model to get an idea about the phys actual physical system. This is one type of modeling. There is another type of modeling we call as analog models, analogous models. So, you would have studied you have a magnetic analogy for electrical circuits and in control systems you would have studied the analogy between electrical and mechanical systems. So, in an analogy like this a model where you have two systems that are analogous what we are trying to say is that the mathematical relationship say between parameters x y z of one system and say x 1 y 1 z 1 of another system would be identical. Okay. The two physical systems are entirely different. So, one is say an electrical circuit the other is a magnetic circuit or one could be a, an electrical circuit and the other could be a mechanical spring mass system. So, these parameters x y z would be different in both the systems right x could be current in the electrical system and force in the mechanical system. So, I write the equations in terms of x y z and what this x y z is in two systems are entirely different physically, but their mathematical relationship between the two is identical. So, what it essentially means is if I know the behavior of one system since the mathematical relationship in the other system is identical in the analogous system I know what is the behavior of the second system. Now, why should you go for it? It is mainly from measurement point of view. Some parameters are easier to measure and some parameters are more difficult to measure. For example, it is very easy to measure current and voltage at any level you want, whereas it is more difficult to measure magnetic parameters like say flux. So, hence when I can build an analogous model with a system where maybe the components are simpler and the measurements are simpler, I would study the original system by using the analogous system. This is another kind of modeling. The third kind of modeling is what we as engineers use very very commonly and that is the mathematical model. So, what is a mathematical model? The name itself tells you what it is. It is simply the mathematical relationship between various parameters of interest. Clear? The mathematical relationship between various parameters of interest that is called as the mathematical model. So, in this session and in the following few sessions we will be looking at the mathematical model of the transmission line. Okay. So, I am not going to model the protection etcetera the effects of that we will only concentrate on the transmission line that would be our main object. So, let us see a few characteristics of the line parameters. So, if this is a transmission line, the line parameters are distributed. What does that mean? If I say this has a resistance of 1 ohm, it is the resistance between the two ends, but the resistance per se is distributed throughout the line. Same way the inductance okay, and the capacitance say between the line and the ground. So, the parameters of interest electrical parameters are the resistance, the inductance and the capacitance of the line. These three parameters are of interest to us. They are distributed, but in most cases to build a mathematical model that is a circuit equivalent 
from which I write the mathematical equations. We use what are called as lumped parameters. I lump them together. Okay. Based on certain assumptions, we use lumped parameters to represent the line. The models developed are valid for both single phase and three phase systems. I will shortly tell you what is the slight difference. The model will be the same, but how you represent the parameters, we will see what is the difference. Now you see in case of a single phase system, you have two conductors, right? I have one conductor take carrying current in the forward path and there has to be a return conductor. So there will be two conductors. Now whenever you talk of resistance of the line, so the line is both conductors together. I do not say there are two lines in the single phase conductor flowing from one point to another. I say it is a there is a line, there is a single phase line between point A and B, that is how we specify. So when I say there is a single phase line between A and B, it automatically means there are two conductors, one for the current to flow from say A to B and another return path, no current cannot accumulate at one point. So there will be a return path B to A, that is a single phase system, there will be two con conductors. So, when you talk of resistance per kilometer, since they are distributed parameters and I do not you know have lines of say you know 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers each one, no, we have lines and we will cut the lines to required sizes. So, the parameters of a 100 kilometer line and a 200 kilometer line, all of them I specify as the R, L or C per kilometer, per kilometer right because they will be if they are identical lines. So, if I, if I say the resistance of the line is 1 ohm, you get no clue about what is the length of the line, right. So, instead we specify as resistance is equal to so many ohms per kilometer, the inductance is so many milli henry per kilometer, microfarad per kilometer. So, when you consider a th single phase system, remember there are two conductors. So, in the circuit model, you must take both the conductors into account, both the conductors into account, okay. So, we will see how to do it when we build the actual mathematical equations. Now, in case of three phase systems, what happens? Three phase system, remember, is not three single phases, no, I have three lines and one phase always provides a return path for the other two phases, right. And if there is any difference in the current, it is not balanced, then there will be some current through the neutral wire, but then in the line I have only three, three lines. So, in case of three phase systems, to build the circuit model, we will be using single phase equivalents clear? I cannot talk of if I have two lines, this line and say one more line of the three phase system, I cannot talk of the resistance of the three phase system, it is meaningless. The resistance is for a line, it is for one line and when I draw the circuit equivalent, all the parameters are phase parameters. Therefore, the voltage you take will be line to neutral voltage and the current will be the phase current. So, it is since it is the systems are generally in star, the phase current and line current will be the same, okay. So, remember one thing, when you are building a single phase equivalent model, there is an inherent assumption that the system is balanced. What does that mean? It means that the load in all the three phases is perfectly balanced, it is the same and the voltages and currents are balanced three phase values. So, equal in magnitude and displaced by 120 degrees, only then you can build a single phase equivalent. If it is not balanced, you will study further in your courses in power system how to model so those systems, okay. So, what are the main considerations 
uh, we take into account when we talk of performance of the transmission line. So, first is voltage drop in the line. The voltage drop is equal to I z, where z is the line impedance. Okay. So, voltage is affected by I and z obviously, but once the line is designed z is a constant. So, you can say the voltage will depend on the current through the line, the voltage drop will depend on the current through the line. And what does the current through the line depend on? It depends on the load connected, right. So, the current is a variable, so the voltage drop across the line is also variable. Next losses in the line, losses in the line is proportional to I squared R, it is equal to R, proportional to I squared R. So, as the load increases the loss also will increase and we saw how you can reduce the resistance. You can use bundled conductors and you can use conductors of larger diameter and reduce the line and reduce the losses. Next we have transmission efficiency. So, I send some power from the sending end, how much of this power actually reaches the receiving end? So, in between there is a loss in the line. So, the transmission efficiency tells me what is the loss and then finally voltage regulation. So, my sending end at the substation my voltage is 230 kV. Now, I connect a load at the receiving end say I connect 2000 megawatts of load what will be the voltage at the receiving end will it will it be 230 kV? Will it be more? Will it be less? So, what is the difference between my sending end and receiving end voltage? So, that is what voltage regulation value will tell me. So, these are the four parameters of interest in the performance of the transmission line. And when you decide on say the material, the line length, etcetera, etcetera you may have to sacrifice one parameter for the other. For example, you may make a compromise on the efficiency to save on the cost. So, that part of the design will also have to include what is the investment a utility is ready to make and also what is the acceptable deviations by the consumer. So, now let us come to classification. So, the parameters R L C are distributed uniformly throughout the line and R L end are, are in series in like any other conductor, any conductor R plus J x, you are used to that in all your circuit theory problems. And the capacitance is between the two conductors in a single phase system and between the conductor and the ground in a three phase system, the line and the neutral in a three phase system. So, the capacitor forms a shunt path because it is between the between two conductors or between a conductor and the neutral conductor. So, based on how we represent these R, L and C, the transmission lines are classified into different types. The first is a short line. So, a line with a length of less than 80 kilometers is called as a short line. Now, do not think this 80 kilometers is something sacred. So, if it is 79.9 or if it is 80.1, it is not a short line, no. So, some books or some content may tell you a short line is 50 kilometers, some may say 60 kilometers. Essentially, it is a modeling concept, okay. So, what is done in a short line model is, let us talk now of model, the circuit model. So, what is done in a short line model is the capacitance is neglected, okay. So, if you want approximate values, you are not actually, you do not want exact values, you just want to get an idea about something, then even a 100 kilometer, 150 kilometer line you can use this model because accuracy is not required clear. So, when you talk of a short line, 
do not think of that 80 kilometer or 60 kilometer, think instead capacitance is neglected, that is what we are doing. Okay? You can use it for any length provided that approximation of capacitance being neglected is okay with whatever you want to calculate. So now, but if that is so, then why do I specify this 60 or 80 kilometers is because up to this line length, up to this line length, neglecting the capacitance does not affect my performance characteristic significantly. What performance characteristic? What we saw? The losses, calculation of the losses, calculation of the regulation, efficiency, voltage drop in the line. So, for short lines, if I neglect the capacitance, I do not get too much of a difference in the values as compared to if I model the capacitance. So, you see if you model the capacitance, then you have more number of components in the circuit model. So, automatically the analysis will become more complex. So, the simplest model you can have for a line is just that of say any component, any inductor. So, a simple inductor is simply modeled as R plus Jx, R and L, that is all, the same thing we do. And this is okay, normally these short lines are used for lower voltages. We do not use short lines at high voltages, we already saw that when we introduced the subject that you know we would like to have higher and higher voltages. So, in the short line model, the capacitance of the line is neglected and the line is simply represented as a series impedance Z, series impedance Z. Now, this is my simple circuit model. Please understand every single parameter in the model. V s, this is the sending end voltage, this is the no, no, normal nomenclature for the sending end voltage V s. I s, sending end current, V r receiving end voltage, I r receiving end current and I want to draw your attention to the direction of I r. See, if I connect a load, the load would be connected here, the load would be connected here. So, the current has to flow into the load. So, in the transmission line model, the receiving end current is shown to enter the load, the load draws the current, the load draws the current. So, you have a very simple model. So, R is the resistance, total resistance of the line and X is the total reactance of the line and Z is R plus Jx, a very simple circuit, a very, very simple circuit. This is called as a short line model. So, you can see that in this model the capacitance does not feature, the capacitance does not feature, I have neglected it. So, V s is the sending end voltage, V r is the receiving end voltage. In three phase systems, the figure represents a single phase equivalent. So, V s is the sending end line to neutral voltage. Similarly, V r is the receiving end line to neutral voltage. You do not have to specify, you do not have to write V s n, V r n, we do not write it, we simply write it as V s V r and it is understood that in a single phase system, it is simply sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. In a three phase system, it is the line to neutral voltage at both the ends. Clear? Do not make this mistake. This is a mistake very commonly made when uh, students try to solve problems. Next we have medium lines. So, medium lines are uh, lines between sorry it is not 80 to 20, it is 80 to 200 kilometers. So, some people may say 150 kilometers, no problem again it is not a sacred number that 150, 200. Essentially what we do in medium lines is we model the capacitance also. In the short line we neglected it. So, here the capacitance of the line is also modeled, but here it is lumped and it is modeled as a shunt capacitor, it is modeled as a shunt capacitor. 
So, there are two popular models T nominal that it is called as nominal T and nominal pi models for the medium lines. Let us see what they are. So, this is the nominal T model. You can see from the name itself why it is called as a T because it is in the shape of a T. So, see what is the circuit model? The line impedance, please remember the line impedance is not like this. All the resistance, reactance, capacitance all are distributed. I am lumping it, I am lumping it. Okay. So, in a single in the simple short line model what did I do? I lumped the entire resistance as R and the, and the entire reactance as X. So, I had a simple R plus J X Z. So, in this model for the medium line I assume that R plus J X is divided into two equal halves Z by 2 and Z by 2. And the shunt capacitance the admittance is Y is connected in the middle. This is a way of modeling. So, whenever we lump distributed parameters and want to represent it in a circuit equivalent, we have to find some way to do it. Is this accurate? No, because it is distributed, but it will give you very good answers. What do you mean by very good answers in analysis? As close to reality as possible. So, this is accepted. Okay. The second model is the pi model, nominal pi model. Again you can see why it is called as pi, it looks like a pi. So, here the entire impedance is lumped between the two nodes. So, this is the sending end and this is the receiving end. Similarly, here also sending end, receiving end. So, you have the sending end voltage current, receiving end voltage current as we saw. So, here I lump the entire impedance, series impedance between the sending and receiving end and the shunt capacitance half, half on at the sending end and half at the receiving end. Clear? These were what are the two models popularly used. Now, can you just look at these two and Ask yourself why we use the pi models more often than the T models. T models are not come used. The reason is if you observe, I have introduced an additional node here. I have introduced an additional node which is not there in the original system. In the original system, I only have sending end and receiving end. I do not have this node. It is only a node introduced in the circuit model got it? So, this if you want to measure, this is not a measurable point. It is because that node does not exist, it is the midpoint of the line that is all, but the node per se does not exist. Whereas, here I just I have not included any node. So, equations are simpler with the pi model. So, when you do power system analysis for your load flows, stability studies, etcetera, all your transmission lines you will be modeling with the pi model and not the T model. Now, because you are going to put it half here and half there, this is called as the half line charging admittance. In technical terms, we call it as the half line charging admittance. So, one half on one side and other half on the other side. So, you can model it up to 100 kV even for 230 kV also you can use that model medium lines. But as I told you none of these numbers are sacred, it is how you model and if the, the modeling accuracy is required for your analysis. Next long lines whenever the length of the line is more than 200 kilometers, they are called as long lines. So, here the issue is when the line is long, you get an error when you lump the parameter. 
you get an error when you lump the parameter. Error means what? The values you compute using the model, circuit model will be significantly different from what you would get if you measure in the actual system. That is the meaning of an error. So, long line models are used for that and it is more rigorous. So, we will see when we come to long line models why this rigorous model is required at all. So, you are clear now we have the short line model where we neglect the capacitance and the medium line model pi and t where you consider the capacitance and you model it in two different ways and you have the long line model where we do not lump the parameters of the line instead we have to write equations considering the distributed nature of the parameters. So, now two definitions are very important as we saw. One is the transmission efficiency. So, efficiency we always know is output by input for any, any device, any system. So, here the output, where is the output? The output is at the receiving end. So, power delivered at the receiving end. And where is the input sending end? Divided by power sent from the sending end into 100. So, normally the efficiency is always quoted in terms of percentage. Now, what is the, what determines the efficiency? So, what is under your control and what is not under your control? So, this efficiency is completely determined by how much the consumer needs. The consumer could be an industry, could be, it could be a group of domestic people, could be another substation which acts as a load on the pre preceding substation. So, the receiving end power is determined by how much of power is required at the receiving end by the consumer and the sending end has to supply that power. The sending end has to automatically supply that power, right. So, what will be the sending end power? It will be the receiving end plus losses because who will supply the losses, the power loss? Obviously, the sending end has to supply the power loss, clear? So, this is a formula widely used for efficiency. There is no other formula, you have to use it. Next voltage regulation. So, one way of defining the voltage regulation is the difference between the sending end voltage and receiving end voltage expressed as a percentage of the receiving end voltage. Do you recollect where you have seen voltage regulation? Yes, you would have seen it in transformers, you would have seen it in electrical generators, right. So, when you load a generator or when you load a transformer, the voltage at the receiving end will drop and you can find the regulation. Same thing here. So, the regulation is V s minus V r by V r into 100 magnitudes, magnitude of V s, magnitude of V r into 100. Again, regulation also is often quoted in terms of percentage. Under no load condition, there is no current flowing through the line. Normally, the load does not take any line. We will see what is the condition, what is the current under no load condition next. But in normal modeling, the current is negligible under no load. So, you can approximately say there is not much of a voltage drop in the line, but this is not always true. We will come to it later when we discuss Ferranti effect. So, the receiving end voltage is equal to the sending end voltage because there is no drop in the line. So, for short lines this is true. So, another way of defining regulation is See, I have a load, this is the receiving end, I have a load at the receiving end, right. I measure the voltage at the receiving, sending end voltage is some value. I measure the voltage at the receiving end 
under full load and now I remove the load and again I measure the voltage. Sending end I do not change, the sending end voltage being the same. So, obviously the voltage will increase when I remove the load because the current will become 0. So, other way of def defining regulation is this, no load voltage minus full load voltage by full load voltage at the receiving end. But most often we use the first one V s minus V r by V r that is what is commonly used in lines. Whereas, in transformers and alternators you could have used, you may have used this uh, formula. Now, let us be very clear about what we mean by power, receiving end power. So, power you know in AC is V i cos phi. Okay. So, in a single phase system, the receiving end power will be V r I r cos phi r because I have only one phase. V r is the receiving end voltage, I r is the receiving end current and cos phi r is the power factor angle at the cos phi r is the power factor at the receiving end. But what is the meaning of V r I r cos phi r in three phase systems? So, recollect that in three phase systems I told you, you have to use the line to neutral voltage. So, when V r represents the line to neutral voltage and this is the phase current and in cos phi r always the power factor you can only define in each phase, you cannot define line to line power factor, it does not even exist. So, this would be, this is important, it would be the power per phase the power per phase in a three phase system. So, what would be the to total power into 3? Why into 3? Because I have three phases and I am assuming I told you what is the assumption I made that the system is balanced. So, since the system is balanced, the power in all the three phases would be the same and therefore, the total three phase power would be 3 times V r I r cos phi you can also calculate it as root 3 VRL IRL cos phi R, where VRL is the line to line voltage, line to line voltage and IRL is the line current. So, you can calculate that way also. I think you know this from basics of three phase systems. Similarly, the sending end power per phase is V s I s cos phi s. This is what you will get from your circuit. When you solve for the circuit, you will get this because you are going to use all line to neutral quantities. And you can also calculate into 3 would be the total sending end power or you can also calculate it as root 3 V s L I s L cos phi s. So, if you see L means it is line to line parameters. clear. So, now we will see how to get what we call a generalized model, generalized circuit model. So, this is my line, I can model it in any way, short line model, medium line model, long line model, anything, pi, t, whatever it is. So, I have only 4 parameters of interest. So, what is here? Here is a network, electric network. What is that electric network? It is a combination of R, L and C in different ways depending on what model I choose. Right? So, this is basically a two port network. Remember from your circuit theory, two port networks? This is a two port network, two port network. This is the input port and this is the output port. So, at the sending end I have V s and I s. And at the receiving end, I have VR and IR. Now, I just want to draw your attention to one thing when you compare it with your two port parameters. Here, 
this is I1. So, in your two port network parameters, you do not use VSIS, you use V1 I1 for the input port and V2 I2 for the output port. This is standard, okay. Most of the uh, textbooks or authors, that is how they name the input port and output port parameters. But there in two port, your so this is V1 and this is I1 similar to your two port V1 and I1 and this is V2. However, in network theory I2 you would have taken like this because when you write equations for two port, I always assume both the currents to enter the ports. So, possibly in network theory you would have been seeing this as V1 is equal to A V2 minus B I2. So, very often students have this doubt why there I put uh, ma'am I put minus B there and now you are putting plus B. That is because there when you say minus B I2 the direction of I2 is like this. Whereas, normally the receiving end current will be outwards, the, it will go to the load. So, you can see from here IR is minus I2, so that is why I have written as plus B IR. Keep this in mind, okay. Do not get confused. So, here in fact, in network theory, it was written as minus B I2 to facilitate this, to write like this for transmission systems. So, Vs is equal to A. V r plus B i r and I s is equal to C V r plus D i r. So, A B C D are constants, A B C D are constants, they are called as generalized constants and this is called as a generalized circuit model, very general. Why general? Because I am not saying what is within this box, what circuit is there I am not saying. So, these equations you see here, the equation equation per se does not take into cognizant anything inside this. So, I, I they are called as generalized equations, generalized circuit equations for transmission systems and A, B, C, D are also called as transmission parameters or very rarely chain parameters. Now, in this equation, remember Vs, Vr, Ir, Is, I have put it in bold. That means they are all phasor quantities, phasor, okay. They have both a complex number, they are all complex numbers. Mathematically, they are all complex numbers. So, now let us define these ABCD parameters or transmission parameters. So, A if you look at this equation, what would be A? A would be V s by V r if I put I r is equal to 0. When I make I r 0, A would be V s by V r, very simple. So, A is V s by V r when I r is equal to 0. So, the receiving end current is 0. When is the receiving end current 0? When the receiving end is open circuited, when the receiving end is open circuited. So, A is defined as the ratio of the sending end voltage to the receiving end voltage when the receiving end is open circuited. So, it is a ratio of two voltages. So, what dimension will it have? No dimension because numerator is volts, denominator is volts. So, A will be a dimensionless parameter. Be very careful as engineers, you should always write the units very, very important. So, A is got no unit, it is dimensionless. Now, what about B? B is again V s by V r, uh, sorry V s by I r when V r is equal to 0. Receiving end voltage is 0 means what when receiving end is short circuited receiving end is short circuited that is B. It is a ratio of voltage and current, so it is unit will be ohms, unit will be ohms. So, B is the ratio of sending end voltage to receiving end current 
when the receiving end is short circuited maximum current receiving end is drawing maximum current because short circuit is the highest load you can have on any system okay next c c you can get from the other equation here so c would be is by vr when ir is equal to 0 therefore c is equal to is by vr when ir is equal to 0 it is the ratio of a current to a voltage so it will have dimension of mo or siemens or siemens i don't know why they have two uh, names for the same uh, dimension and it's it causes lot of confusion sometimes anyway i prefer to use mo to siemens and d is is by ir when vr is equal to 0 vr is equal to 0 means short circuited output is short circuited so it's a ratio of sending end current to receiving end current since it is the ratio of two currents, it is dimensionless. So, now we have the definition of all the four parameters A, B, C, D parameters. We have the definition. These A, B, C, D parameters are called the generalized circuit constants. Generalized circuit constants. So, now we will move further and derive these generalized constants for different models. We have discussed so many models, we will see how to calculate these for the different types of models we have discussed. Now, I am not going to derive or we need not derive anything specially for single phase and three phase separately. Okay? We will use the same nomenclature, same nomenclature A, B, C, D, V, S, V S, V R, I S, I R, same nomenclature. The equations are same. Only thing is be clear what is the parameter in each of the cases, in case of single phase and in case of three phase. So, this table is something you have to be very clear about. So, V S, in case of the single phase, it is the sending end voltage for single phase and for three phase, it is sending end phase voltage. Phase voltage means line to neutral voltage. And IS is the sending end current and here it is the sending end phase current. Normally they are all star systems, so phase and line will be the same. IR similarly is the receiving end current and here it is the receiving end phase current. VR is the receiving end voltage and here it is the receiving end phase voltage. Now this is important R. So, when you use a single phase system, I told you, you need two conductors, one in the forward path and a return conductor. So, I am going to lump both the conductors into a single resistance R. So, that is called as the loop resistance because you see, this is sending end, receiving end and returning when you take both, it forms a loop. So, you have to consider the resistance of two conductors the resistance of two conductors that is also called as the loop resistance. Okay? And this is one thing which students often forget to take into account. And in three phase systems, it is the resistance per phase. Similarly, X, X is the loop reactance. So, if you take your, your data will normally be for one conductor, you have to multiply it by two. And here it is reactance per phase. And capacitance is between the two conductors for a single phase system. And for a three phase system, it is between the line and neutral. What we call as capacitance per phase. You would have learnt how to calculate this parameter based on the dimensions of the line. Phi s is the sending end pf angle and phi r is the receiving end pf angle. You do not have any confusion about phi s and phi r because you know there is nothing like a line to line power factor. Power factor is always per phase, it is always per phase. Apart from all this, what is the major assumption? 
my three phase system I am assuming it is balanced, the three phase system is assumed to be balanced. So, the ABCD parameters exhibit two important properties in symmetrical networks. So, symmetrical network means what? I have the two ports. So, when I view the network from one port, it is identical the network that is what is there in between. It is identical to the network as viewed from the other port that is a symmetrical network. I am sure in network uh, topology and two port networks you would have studied about symmetrical networks. And the other one is AD minus BC is equal to 1. So, we will prove this AD minus BC is equal to 1 very simple. So, let us assume that the receiving end is short circuited and I apply a voltage E at the sending end. Okay. So, V r is equal to 0 because I have short circuited the receiving end and V s is equal to E I am applying an external source. So, V s is equal to B i r, V r is 0. So, A V r will be 0. So, V s is B you see from in this here V r is 0. So, V s will be B i r. Similarly, here V r is 0. So, I s is d i r. So, i r will be here i r will be v s by b and what is v s? I am applying a voltage of E. So, i r is E by b good. Next consider, so I have short circuited the receiving end and I have got. Now, let me short circuit the sending end and apply a voltage E at the receiving end. Again the same equations, this is the generalized equations. So, here I am short circuiting V s, V s is made 0 and V r is equal to E. So, here I r is from here this is 0. So, I r will be minus A V r is E minus A V r is E by B. Okay. And I s is C E because V r is E and into D I r. So, I am substituting for I r here what I have calculated. So, I have C e into A d e by B. So, this is just written in a B c minus A d into E by B clear. Now, we have a beautiful theorem in networks called as reciprocity theorem. What does that mean? When you have a source at one end in a linear circuit and it gives a response in some branch. Now, if the source and response are interchanged, the ratio will remain the same that is reciprocity theorem. Okay. Therefore, the sending end current I get in the first case and the receiving end current I get in the second case, this is minus I r that is because of the directions of the current they must satisfy this because recollect how what I did in the first case I applied E to sending end and short circuited the receiving end. So, I found the response at the receiving end. In the second case I short circuited the sending end and applied a voltage E at the receiving end and calculated what is the sending end current right. So, I know the values I substitute and from this I get a d minus b c is equal to 1, a d minus b c is equal to 1. Okay. So, simple now v s i s I have written the same equations generalized equation in matrix form. So, if I want to calculate the receiving end parameters in terms of the sending end parameters, so v r i r will be the matrix inverse into v s i s. So, this inverse is very simple d a minus b minus c and this is 1 we just now proved a d minus b c is 1. So, this. So, you see this equation tells you how to calculate the receiving end parameters if you know v s and i s and this tells you how to calculate if you know v r and i r. 
So, either you will use this equation or this equation to calculate the parameters of interest. So, in the next session, I will be taking up how to calculate these parameters for the short line. Thank you.